Hey guys, welcome back. This is Sub LBC here doing just a quick video addendum to my previous video. I was a little bit um, upset about the fact that I was not able to basically show you guys what it is I was talking about on video because I just was not able to stop down my camera enough. But by combining a variable um, ND filter set at its maximum setting with the previous filter that I used in the last video, um, and then of course you know pumping the f-stop up as high as it goes. Um, you are able now to you know really get a good idea of what I'm talking about with these bulbs. So um, what you're looking at right now is a Solus Tech uh, matrix, and um, this is the older generation. Remember in the last video, um, I had mentioned that the newer generation are even worse than the older generation. But um, you can clearly see here with the older generation, that there's just a lot of you know just activity fluctuations, just a, you know just looks like chaotic uh, inside of the filament of this Ushio double-ended bulb when it's running on this ballast. Now. Um, in this garden, which is the upstairs mothering room, which is pretty much a mirror to the downstairs, um, except for the fact that when we expanded it, we decided to add two power box ballasts instead of the Solus Tech Matrix uh, because they were touted as being DE compatible. And at that point, we had noticed uh, problems, you know, with these bulbs. You know, and all it takes is just, you know, even looking at them with the naked eye, you can see it. But you can really see it if you combine like Method Sevens uh, with some pretty decent, you know, sunglasses. Just look right at the bulb; you can see it. And uh, with the higher the wattage, the more you're going to see it. And right now, um, all the bulbs here are set to uh, 600 watt. Actually, the power box are set to 600, while the matrix are set at 630. But um, you can see here, guys, on the power box, uh, you know, system that there's very, very little, if any, uh, noticeable. And, and honestly, you know, with my naked eye, I can see just a little, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of it. Uh, but right now I'm not wearing the uh, Method 7s, I'm just wearing my, uh, my polarized, um, I think these are Versace's, and I can barely see, and honestly guys, it's too bright for me to even look at, I'm just looking at it mostly here through the camera, but uh, on camera I can't see anything, you know, it looks almost like a fluorescent bulb when you have this much, you know, ND filtering going on, uh, but clearly guys, when you move it over here to the, uh, the Matrix, you know, big difference there, you know, uh, these bulbs are, are really not that happy, and you know, like I said, it's even worse on the, uh, the newest generation of matrixes, you know? I mean, just look at that. Yeah, sorry guys, my camera's having a little bit of problem uh, focusing because of all of the, uh, the filtering going on, but I mean, you know, it's pretty damn obvious, guys. There is just a lot of stuff there going on in the filament. And uh, yeah, just want to make that known for all you guys, again, uh, not to dissuade you from investing in the double-ended technology, because again, I still do think that it is the best way to go if you are going to be running, you know, some kind of a high pressure sodium HID system, but you got to really be, you know, pay very close attention to the kind of ballasts that you're being paired up with. And, you know, if someone's trying to sell you like a bundle, like a DE bundle or, or whatnot, uh, you may want to avoid it if it's a ballast that you just know nothing about. And uh, one thing also that I want to mention too about, uh, you know, these things being hot, I've heard people complain about them being too hot. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of a myth that's developed from people that have been running the Gavitas, you know, at their highest output setting and, and having heat problems in that scenario. But, uh, you know, DEs versus uh, mogul socket HIDs, like, you know, for instance, what I'm doing, uh, there's absolutely no difference at all as far as the heat output is concerned. They're, they're just as hot uh, as anything else that's going to run 1,000 watt using the same, you know, exact process to create light. You know, in this case, you know, using a ballast for high pressure sodium filament. And, uh, you know, it would violate kind of the laws of thermodynamics if, uh, you know, if they were hotter for no reason, assuming that the light output was the same and the energy consumption was also the same. You know what I'm saying? Um, although one thing to uh, make note is that there is no way to air cool a DE bulb, or at least you're not supposed to. Uh, air cooling is a big no-no for DEs. They have to pretty much run exposed because I believe that air cooling can damage them. And you'll notice that uh, all current DE fixtures that are, are available are of an open nature, you know, whether it be in an adjustable wing type design or inside of the uh, enclosures offered by Gavita and Papillion. And that's, you know, pretty much a requirement for the technology. So uh, don't, to, go, don't go trying to do some, you know, makeshift MacGyver thing where you're going to put a DE bulb inside of a cool tube and uh, air cool it. Uh, it's not probably going to help you. In fact, from what I understand, it could lead to the bulb fracturing. And then you got to deal with cleaning up a bunch of broken glass uh, from inside of an air ventilated tube. And uh, that could be precarious at best. So uh, that is pretty much it for my addendum. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time.